1 million sexually transmitted infections are reported each year worldwide out of which majority of them are asymptomatic a report by who says that 374 million people have been reported with stis out of which one of the fours are curable today we have dr neha rastogi with us who's going to explain us about what are stds what is the difference between them thank you so much ma'am uh, for being here uh, when we talk about sexually transmitted infections there have been a lot of variables in that so let's start with what is a uh, std and what is the difference between a viral std and a bacterial std right so uh, recently not very recently but then the std term has more or less been replaced by an sti Okay, that's a sexually transmitted infection uh, because many a times, as you have mentioned, that they are asymptomatic, mm. so the transition from infection to disease is less. Mm. As far as the different causes of STI is concerned, we have a whole range. Mm. So we have a viral, we have bacterial, we do have even the parasitic causes, mm. and rarely the fungal. Mm. So bacterial, most commonly STIs, which are of common occurrence also, and which have a full fledged treatment and they are fully curable also mm. are bacterial in nature mm. most commonly which we call about the syphilis gonorrhea there is also called as a granuloma inguinale and so forth mm. and as far as the viral is considered most common which we call, talk about is the herpes mm. which is one of the most commonly linked sti herpes simplex genital infections then followed by warts etc even hepatitis b c and hiv are also a part and parcel i should say associated with stis okay so when we talk about stis or say stds uh what are the symptoms like early symptom stages or the later symptom stages where a people needs to see a doctor right so uh, first of all it's in the stis mm-hmm. as far as the symptomatic stis is concerned it's called as a tip of iceberg mm-hmm. because majority of them are asymptomatic So either one of the partner starts complaining and then eventually many a times the other partner gets tested for the STI so this is the one as far as the overall symptoms is concerned they are mostly three or four symptoms in the overlapping occurrence mm. one is the genital ulcer mm. it can be one to multiple in number mm. and as far as the genital ulcer when i talk about mainly it's confirmed in time to the males okay they have more of the penile ulcers mm. Second is the discharge okay. for urethra, okay. most commonly linked with the females, mm. and of course with the males as well. Mm. And like I said, the the uh, urination by urination, you are having a pain mm. or burning. Mm. As far as females is concerned, vaginal discharge is also another category mm. to add on with or even overlap with. Mm. And then when it's keep untreated, mm. you can have the pain in the loin, the groin, and the back. Mm. to form as a sequelae mm. fever as a upfront presentation of an sti is less common mm. but yes it can be found in 30% of it mm. so when we talk about uh, say symptoms and then when symptoms occur there must be the causes of it <coughs> because jaise hum fever hota hai to fever hota hai because there must be something right. behind it so when we talk about causes what kind of causes what are the causes that can be you know uh, converted into stis or sd these so one is a risk factor wise host factor of course where the sexual practices are the most common mm-hmm. the multiple partners mm-hmm. not the very safe sex practices mm-hmm. they are the one of the major risk factors being there mm-hmm. as far as the causes is considered uh, i meant about the etiological or the causative agents per mm-hmm. se just we have just discussed about that it can be bacterial viral fungal or even parasitic in nature mm. for all practical purposes major of the stis like i said which are common can have a long term complications as well are mostly restricted to bacterial and viral mm. so uh, 
इज इट मेजोरिटी वाइज इज इट लाइक जेंडर एफिशिएटेड लाइक कि ज्यादा मेल्स में ही देखा जाता है एज पर यू हैव लाइक ट्रीटेड लॉट ऑफ पीपल वॉट इज दू नो मेजोरिटी ऑफ जेंडर यू मस्ट हैव ट्रीटेड और यू इट हैज बीन सीन की एस टी डीज और एस टी आईज यू नो लाइक यू हैव बीन सीन इन द मोस्ट कॉमन जेंडर राइट सो हेयर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से बिकॉज एस टी आई इज सच अ टॉपिक लाइक आई सेट द टिप ऑफ दी आईज वर्क ऑर द रिपोर्टेड इट्स बिकॉज it is associated with some of the other kind of taboo words yes so majority of the times it's like you know the as far as the indian setting is concerned many a times female doesn't even know hmm. that she or she is having an sti like a symptom hmm. because it's being said okay vaginal discharge it it's can be common yeah heavy bleeding it can be common yes. a pain it can be because of the poor menstrual cycle yes, or you right. know the practices but they cannot able to judge hmm. that this is there and even if they do many a times they are not even able to come to report us that this xyz symptoms is being happening mm. because of the social pressure the societal pressure like i said mm. as far as the males is considered because mostly i don't want to be a gender bias but most of the outside practices in terms of their social linkages mm. and of course because the the uh, symptoms wise they are very localized mm-hmm. so genital urinary system in the male is little more complicated as well as simple at the same time mm. so the penile ulcer is something which is very easily visible mm. so that is why the upfront reporting from a male is quite common mm-hmm. and quite easier being seen as compared to the female so when we talk about stds and sti's has uh, there been any uh changes in the treatments and in the medicines in the past few years of like any progress in the treatments and in the medicines which have been given to the patients or been in, in treated so one good thing about sti is that the treatment of choices so far the resistance is very rare mm-hmm. so for example penicillin mm-hmm. it's an age old molecule mm-hmm. still very very effective for one of the most common sti which is syphilis okay over the years and over the ages that one molecule is very very good as far as you report us early mm-hmm. that the xy person has a syphilis mm-hmm. as far as for the gonorrhea which is another a very common sti there a lot of progress is being happening because the drug resistant gonorrhea is quite a common occurrence mm. so eventually every year the newer antibiotic is coming up and there is actually nowadays a combination of the antibiotic therapy mm. to treat a drug resistant gonorrhea mm. for the other stis more or less the simple is uh, the the treatment is more of a combination mm. because like i said mm. that there are many overlapping symptoms mm. so in majority of the times an sti we do usually treat by a syndromic approach mm. rather than a picking up a particular etiological agent which is not very obvious in some of the cases hmm. as far as viral is considered the topical plus minus oral antiviral remains a drug of choice okay so when we talk about uh, treatments so stds uh, are curable or they are just treatable and manageable or they can be cured when somebody is suffering from stds or stis so that depends upon the window period the person has been in most of the times when you are picked up in the early stages mm-hmm. they are nearly nearly 100% probable mm-hmm. and when you come into the later stages for example when there is a systemic whole body involvement because like i said these syphilis gonorrhea and even herpes they are something some agents when you are not treated in time they can go and disseminate even up to brain mm-hmm. you can have lot of behavioral lot of hands mm-hmm. face everywhere it's involved mm-hmm. so that depends upon the stage when you land it mm-hmm. majority of them at an early or stage 1 mm-hmm. they are almost 100% curable mm-hmm. and as so far as the progression goes on the response rate of the treatment and of course if they are drug sensitive still the response rate drops by every 10 to 15% with every stage okay so when we talk about uh, say we talked about uh, the uh, you know treatments and how it has been invented in a better way so when we talk about diagnose how do you diagnose somebody is uh, suffering from stds stis ya fir jab wo diagnose ho jata hai to how do you treat it according to what the person is suffering right so uh, isme teen hi tarike ke policy hoti hai test treat and track okay so whenever a person is coming as we have already mentioned about the symptoms mm-hmm. so mostly the symptoms will be an ulcer or a discharge pain mm-hmm. while passing even urine mm-hmm. and many in the males while uh, doing the erection or something or kai baar females mein or males mein bhi while doing the sexual contact they are having a pain okay and plus minus the back pain and all mm-hmm. so with these kind of symptoms and of course vaginal discharge uh, heavy vaginal discharge or the color of discharge mm-hmm. in females as well so we try to rule out the common five six causes of the sexually transmitted infections 
the most common samples which we use is usually the uh, swab mm. the genital ulcer swab mm. or even the vaginal discharge sample per se mm. and in some cases even a urine sample can be taken care of mm. and like in syphilis specifically or the herpes just the clinical mere presence also is very suggestive of that kind of an infection mm. but there are also the blood tests available for few of them mm. to actually clinch the diagnosis and to even specify which stage specifically in syphilis since it's a chronic disease you can also with the help of few blood tests can identify the stages of syphilis as well. mm. and uh, the treatments does treatment any kind of treatment mm. involves any kind of a surgery or it can be treated with the medicines and the medications basically mm. so 95 to 98% times it's a medical treatment yes. it's only the conservative mm. medical antibiotic to be honest and mm. with some supportive medication like analgesics and all mm. will be taken care of mm. sometimes especially when it's unreported and untreated in the females mm. it goes up to the entire female reproductive tract okay. involves there causes some adhesions and all and then it presents with the severe pain in abdomen mm. lower pain and then probably that's very rare 1 to 2% mm. so there we require a surgical intervention but most of the times like i said 95 to 98% times if reported right in time you can treat it medically So when we uh, talk about STDs and STI, as we talk that it's kind of a taboo. People don't like to talk about it, and it might include your, uh, you know, herpes. And then you said it can uh, include HIV also. It's one of the taboos also. So how can we cure people in a larger scale? so that if they have std first of all it should not reach to the stage where they have to go through std or stis how can we like you know manage to cure a big large scale of people and to tell them that this is not a taboo you can come and talk to your doctor and first of all to reach to that point also you have to take care of a lot of things absolutely so i think we it's a multi level task to be honest so it's right basic because these days when we do talk about even at the you know the younger adults adolescent rather at level we talk about the sex education mm-hmm. so even there also we need to discuss about the medical aspects of sex mm-hmm. education as far as when you grow advance in the age and with your relationships you should be aware or maybe you can have a mass screening kind of a thing mm-hmm. as far as the passive approach from a doctor's perspective to talk about the sti and all so we do have these days both way approach like i said test treat, uh, treat and track strategy mm. so whenever you have a some kind of an sti or a visible suspicious sti mm. you're not only treating a patient you mm. have to treat and uh, see the partner whether mm. the partner has also having the similar symptoms or not same way if somebody x person is diagnosed with the hiv or an sti we have to come to check for the vice versa diseases so if you have an hiv we will screen for the sti if you have an sti we need to screen for the hiv mm. so the more diagnostic and more mass level screening we do mm. and of course with the education the basic bullet points that what needs to be checked what are the common symptoms female specifically the menstrual hygiene and menstrual education and any discharge other than the normal otherwise than a period discharge has to be reported to some or the other middle person or something so that that reaches the doctor earliest mm.